Hello, this is Udi. And following our first lesson in synthesis and synthesizers, it's really important to try out and see that you can create your own sounds using these limited tools or, or techniques that we've learned. And it is important that you will play with the synthesizers, try out things and see what you come up with. Don't be afraid. Nothing is really going to explode or, uh, you know, uh, turn into a monster. So let's try and create our first sound here. And I am sticking to the basics, so nothing really uh, fancy or, uh, you know, or complex. So I'm using SynthMaster because it's really, really easy to understand. And I'm going to use some other synths to explore these basic techniques. So if you don't have SynthMaster, that's fine. You can use whatever you have, but I do recommend uh, that you look into this and see maybe this is something you would like to add to your uh, synth toolbox. So let's see. I'm starting out with the um, init preset here, just clicking, and that, that's what I have, a basic saw tooth. Nothing fancy. So let's try and play with the envelope. And in this synthesizer, the uh, the first envelope here is locked to our voice volume, which means that we are already set to go. And if I'm uh, playing with this uh, ADSR one, you'll see the effect on the volume, on the shape, on the way that the the sound is um, behaving over time. Meaning. Attack time will uh, will basically get us a short uh, amount of time to get to the maximum or a long time. So let's see what this actually means. So the more attack time, it will take more time to get to the maximum level here in terms of volume. And we can use um, envelopes to shape our filter cutoff, for example, or uh, resonance, whatever. But for now, this envelope really affects our voice volume. So more attack, it just takes more time to build up the sound. Now, if I want to have like a pluck sound that is really uh, a quick attack time, getting to the maximum really fast and then dropping out really fast, then I can have the decay time just, uh, you know, relaxed here and then sustain level going maybe to half here. And then let's get the release time just uh, relaxed also. So you can already hear that when I'm playing the note and releasing my finger from the keyboard, then the sound stays for, you know, fades out Let's hear it. Right. And then I can have the decay time just more here. And let's have the sustain level just a little bit up. Right. So let me remind you how envelopes work. So attack time is the time to that will take for the sound to get to its maximum level. So right now it is set to almost nothing, meaning we immediately get the, the maximum volume. And then there is the sustain level. So the sustain level is, is actually the, the, the level of volume in this case, because we are affecting the voice volume, the level of the volume at the sustained um, state, meaning I'm pressing the key, there's the initial press, but then there's the ongoing sound. And as long as I, as long as I, I keep my finger on the key, then that's the sustain level. That's the volume that I'll have. And let me show you that with the equalizer here. So let's get the sustain level down and you'll see that we get really fast to uh, uh, the maximum volume and then dropping. Right, so that, that's the that's the sustain. Now, the decay time is the time that it, the, that will take 
from the initial moment and until I am starting to fade into my sustain level. And then finally, the release uh, amount will be the amount of uh, time that it will take the sound to fade away once I take my finger off the keyboard. All right, so this is kind of a plucky sound. I can get it to sound pluckier. All right, and it doesn't sound very much. But what I can do is I can have my filter filter out some of the high notes, or sorry, some of the high frequencies. And I can have the resonance picking here and get the gain just boosted up here. And let's have a look at the equalizer and see what does it mean to have the resonance up. You see this peak here? That's the effect of my resonance, which is boosting the frequencies just at the cutoff uh, point here. And I can change the, the type of... Uh, of filter, for example, that will be a virtual analog. All right, so now let's see how that uh, sound is affected by a reverb. So if I go to FX and get the reverb going, and I don't want it so much into the mix, just a little bit here. And I can also have some, uh, some delay. Right, and now, oh, sorry. And now let's try and do something else. Let's try and have some sort of an envelope affecting our, um, our cutoff here. So first of all, let's, let's do it manually. So I can have an envelope just doing this exactly. Let's see. So I'll, I'll take envelope number two here and we'll just drag it and drop it on our cutoff here. And we can have the attack time set here. And have the release time. Now it is it is important to understand what we that, that we can actually have have the, 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 these two envelopes match. And this is something that you will have to master in more advanced stage and matching those uh, particular ADSR settings. For example, if I'm setting uh, a very long release time here and then um, uh, my, my first ADSR is set up differently, that might have different effects. So let's see in the equalizer what really going on here. So you can see that the, the filter is opening up. It just goes to the right here. So we, we get more of, uh, of the high frequencies. Why is that? This is because we are set up in, in this way. You can see here the cutoff is just going to travel all that way, meaning that will be the, the, the kind of effect. So. Now, you see this part here? I can affect that. So that's the amount. And I can have the cutoff going actually the other way around. So I can have it start off with more high frequencies and then just closing to the left. So it really depends on what, what kind of sound you're looking for. But you can always try it out manually and then decide what you want to do. So that's another technique that you should uh, try it out. So you can just do something like that.
So I can have another um, another envelope just m manipulating my uh, resonance here, just for fun. So I can have ADSL3 assigned to my resonance. And let's just get that maybe less. And the attack time can be longer. That's a little, little bit too much. So let's have that on the other way. And uh, th that's pretty much it. So, so that's one sound that you can easily create with any tool. Let's try and use some other uh, synthesizer just for fun. So let's have Massive here. This is a very uh, popular synthesizer by Native Instruments. And let's go to our default sound, new sound. And here we have three oscillators. I'm going to use the first one. Let's hear it out. This is just the basic sound, so tooth. And you can already see that the, my amp, my amplifier here is already um, coupled, already set up with envelope four. So envelope four is my, uh, m my envelope to, to shape our uh, volume. So let's play with that. I can have maybe a different type of um, of uh, waveform, and this is a wavetable uh, synthesizer, and we'll learn all about uh, wavetables in our next lesson about oscillators. So, uh, for now, this is just uh, just something that you you can play with, even without knowing exactly what is a, a wavetable. Okay, so let's have filter one affect our uh, oscillator here, and we'll get a low pass, meaning we're going to let the low frequencies pass and cut down some of the highs. And we can see that the resonance is, is actually set here to the middle. So it means that we have a resonance point here. I can drop that. Right, and just for fun of it, let's have another oscillator join in the play here. And let's select something, just random something. Let's get this one. And I can have the pitch maybe um, one octave down, minus 12 semitones. Let's hear it. That, that's the basic sound, and I can uh, change the wavetable position. Right, and get oscillator one back. And let's hear what would a reverb do here. So let's get a, a reverb. Get the size going. And maybe let's have some, um, let's have a, a, a sync delay, meaning it is synced to my host, to my uh, BPM here, which is 120 BPM.
this is already a very rich sounding preset here. Just, uh, you know, very, very simple, but effective. And I can also have envelope one affect my cutoff the same way we did before. So I'm just gonna drop it here on this slot and click and drag. Maybe that's a little bit too much, so I'll just back off here. And let's just, for the fun of it, take an LFO and drop it on our, uh, let's say, wavetable position here. So that is, that is it for now, and I would like to encourage you to take whatever synth you have and try it out. Just play with that, see what you can do with just the simple tools that you have. And on the next lesson, we'll learn more about oscillators and the possibilities uh, of uh, sound design that is uh, uh, possible with those uh, uh, devices. And on top of that, don't ever stop trying. Nothing is going to, to go wrong here. The, the worst is that you will just sound a very horrible sound. Uh, so, uh, you know, that, that, that's pretty much it. So see you on the next lesson. Thank you. Bye-bye.